Hello again. So in this um, video, what we're going to be um, learning about is um, a pathology of lung inflation and deflation. In this particular pathology, we're going to be looking at is a collapsed lung. Okay, it's called atelectasis. So think about the lung collapsing. Okay, collapsing. So lungs should be inflating and deflating. This is not a collapsed lung, it's one that cannot inflate or deflate. So what we wanna look at is what is going on with the pressure. So if you guys remember back in the original slide where I stressed that how important it is that the intrapulmonary, which is the lung pressure, be greater than the intrapleural pressure, okay? So this is a very important relationship. It has to be greater so that the lung has a greater pressure than the surrounding so it can inflate and deflate. In a collapsed lung, this is the, what should normally happen, but this relationship is disrupted where now the intrapulmonary pressure is now less than the intrapleural pressure. This is not normal. So how do you get to this point? So there's two, thi two things that we're looking at. So there are two ways that this can happen. One is that the intrapulmonary pressure went down. So this is the first scenario. And the second scenario is if the intrapul intrapleural pressure, the purple one, went up. Okay? So let's look at both of the scenario and how this happens. Okay, so again, this is not normal. It should not be like this. So if you drop the intrapulmonary pressure, it's going to be less than the intrapleural. Or if you increase the intrapleural, then that's going to also be greater than the intrapleural pulmonary pressure. Okay, the first example is that just like we talk about the intrapulmonary pressure went up. Okay, so how does this happen? This is actually quite common. It's called post-operative atelectasis. What that means is post-operation. So think about when a patient's under anesthesia and they're in a four-hour open-heart surgery. Well, all that mucociliary escalator is not moving the mucus and there's not the breathing's assisted. So then um, when they wake up from the operation, there's gonna be a lot of mucus that needs to be cleared. And if that doesn't get cleared, then there's gonna be a large mucus accumulation and the mucus plug forms and plugs the airway. So when the airway is plugged, the alveolar pressure is gonna be changed because the air can no longer exchange in and out the airway. So that causes the air in the alveolar, alveoli to, be, to go down and that deflates. So think about deflation of the alveolar. So if the lung is like this, now it's deflated. So when it's deflated, that's less pressure than it was before. So the deflation of the alveoli leads to a decrease in intrapulmonary pressure. So this causes the fact that now if it's lower than the intrapleural, then the intrapleural pressure can crush the alveolar sacs. Okay, you can see in this picture, there's an area of collapse where the lung completely deflated. Okay, so to, do, to limit this as a nurse, it, what you're gonna have to do is there's certain um, uh, protocol, care protocol for pulse operative. You wanna make sure no matter how painful the patient is coughing up that mucus so the plug doesn't form. And two is that they should have deep breathing to reinflate and the alveoli so the alveolar pressure can be maintained. If you've ever seen in an operating room or a pulse operate, in room care, you see this little like a pump like you think, it goes that is actually checking to make sure that the patient is actually breathing deeply rather than really shallow breaths. Okay, so that's pulse apparative atelectasis. The second one, let's look at that now. What happens if we interrupt the intrapleural pressure? Okay, so that's in the pleural cavity. So in the pleural cavity, Remember that pressure has to be maintained to be less than the intrapulmonary. So this pressure can be altered if a patient is injured from a gunshot wound, stabbing wound, any sort of violence, 
uh, accidents. So in like uh, in gun violence situations, there's going to be a lot of victims that may have also a collapsed lung or pneumothorax. So what happens is when there's a puncture wound in the lung or a gunshot wound, the air can get sucked into the pleural cavity. As more and more air gets sucked in, the greater and greater the intrapleural pressure. If the intrapleural pressure goes above the intrapulmonary pressure, then that's gonna push and collapse the lung. You can see here at different degrees of collapsed lung, and that's a pneumothorax, okay? So, um, and this also can happen with other lung infections and also other things. But obviously when you have a lung that's completely collapsed and cannot inflate or deflate, you lose that lung function. Okay, so now, so you, not, now you have only 50% lung function. Okay, so uh, in the hospital, what you have to do is put a tube, a chest tube into the patient and suck out that air decreasing the intrapulmonary, uh, intrapleural pressure. So decrease the pleural pressure, suck the air out. And when that happens, that gives the lung, the intrapulmonary pressure, a chance to reinflate and reestablish um, the pressure. This will keep on happening. If the pressure go, if air goes in again, you have to suck the air out again so that the lung can reinflate. Um, until the wound, the gunshot wound or the stabbing wound heals, um, the patient has to be monitored to make sure another pneumothorax does not happen. So um, hopefully this makes sense. There's a nice video that is actually from a movie called The Three Kings. You can watch can, to illustrate this as well. And then I have some practice questions for you to practice. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, send me an email and I'll be happy to answer them.